everyone, let's go back in time together and learn something new. Introduction The French Revolution, which lasted from 1789 to 1799, was a period of profound political and social upheaval in France. It fundamentally transformed the country's political landscape and had far-reaching consequences not only for France but also for Europe as a whole. This account aims to provide a comprehensive analysis of the causes and effects of the French Revolution, examining the socio-economic conditions, political factors, and ideological influences that precipitated this watershed event. Chapter 1 – Economic Crisis France in the late 18th century faced severe economic challenges, characterized by a combination of financial mismanagement, regressive taxation, and widespread poverty. The monarchy's extravagant spending, a burdensome feudal system, and a skewed distribution of wealth further exacerbated the economic crisis. In the years leading up to the French Revolution, France experienced a deep-rooted economic crisis that had a profound impact on its society. The monarchy's financial mismanagement and the burden of an outdated feudal system contributed significantly to the country's economic woes. One of the primary causes of the economic crisis was the monarchy's extravagant spending. The French monarchy, particularly under Louis XV and Louis XVI, had a reputation for indulgence and profligate expenditure. Lavish court ceremonies, opulent palaces, and the maintenance of a large standing army placed an enormous strain on the royal treasury. Furthermore, the support extended to the American colonies during their war for independence from Britain, though driven by a desire to weaken their rival, further strained the French economy. The costs incurred in these endeavors contributed to an already mounting national debt. Compounding the issue was the regressive taxation system prevalent in France. The burden of taxation fell disproportionately on the lower classes, particularly the peasantry. The tax system was complex, with numerous indirect taxes such as the taille, land tax, and the gabelle, salt tax, that heavily affected the common people. The privileged classes, such as the nobility and the clergy, enjoyed exemptions and paid little in the way of taxes. This regressive system, with its unjust distribution of the tax burden, deepened the resentment and frustration among the lower classes, who were already struggling to make ends meet. The economic crisis was also exacerbated by the burdensome feudal system that persisted in France. Feudal dues and obligations weighed heavily on the peasantry, who were required to provide labor, goods, and payments to their feudal lords. These obligations, coupled with high rents and taxes, left the rural population in a state of perpetual poverty and vulnerability. The system stifled economic growth and mobility, preventing the peasantry from improving their conditions and contributing to the overall economic stagnation. Furthermore, France suffered from a skewed distribution of wealth, with a significant concentration of economic power in the hands of the aristocracy and the clergy. The nobility enjoyed privileges and exemptions, and the clergy possessed vast land holdings and collected tithes from the peasantry. This concentration of wealth stifled entrepreneurship and economic innovation among the lower classes, who faced limited opportunities for upward mobility. The resulting inequality not only hindered economic progress but also fostered a sense of social injustice and resentment among the common people. Chapter 2 – Agrarian Crisis The majority of the French population was engaged in agriculture, but outdated farming practices and heavy taxation on peasants left them burdened with poverty and insecurity. Crop failures, food shortages, and rising bread prices added to the growing discontent among the lower classes. In the late 18th century, France was primarily an agrarian society, with the majority of its population engaged in farming and rural activities. However, the agrarian sector faced significant challenges that contributed to the overall economic crisis and social unrest that ultimately led to the French Revolution. Outdated farming practices characterized the agricultural landscape in France. The methods employed by peasants were largely traditional and inefficient, relying on outdated techniques such as the three-field system and open-field cultivation. These methods limited productivity and hindered agricultural progress. The lack of innovation and resistance to change, perpetuated by the rigid feudal system, prevented the adoption of more efficient farming techniques and technologies that were emerging in other parts of Europe. Adding to the woes of the peasantry were heavy taxation and feudal obligations. 
peasants were burdened with a multitude of taxes, including the land tax, tithe, tithes to the church, and various local levies. These taxes, often regressive in nature, placed a disproportionate burden on the lower classes, while the nobility and clergy enjoyed significant exemptions. The weight of these fiscal obligations significantly reduced the income and resources available to the peasantry, exacerbating their already precarious economic situation. The feudal system, which still persisted in many parts of France, further added to the agrarian crisis. Peasants were subjected to feudal dues and obligations imposed by their landlords, such as providing labor, goods, or payments. These obligations, which were remnants of a bygone era, hindered the peasants' ability to improve their own economic conditions. Feudal obligations stifled entrepreneurial activities and restricted the mobility of the rural population, perpetuating a cycle of poverty and dependence. Additionally, crop failures and food shortages struck the French countryside with increasing frequency. Poor harvests resulting from adverse weather conditions, such as droughts or floods, led to dwindling food supplies. The peasants, who relied heavily on their agricultural produce for sustenance and income, faced dire circumstances when their crops failed. The scarcity of food pushed prices higher, particularly for staple commodities like bread, which was a dietary staple for the lower classes. Rising bread prices, combined with stagnant or declining wages, intensified the hardship and frustration experienced by the rural population. The agrarian crisis and its accompanying hardships profoundly affected the lower classes and contributed to their growing discontent. Peasants and rural laborers faced a vicious cycle of poverty, insecurity, and limited prospects for improvement. The burden of heavy taxation, feudal obligations, and outdated farming practices left them mired in poverty and vulnerable to economic fluctuations. The hardships experienced by the rural population played a significant role in fueling their grievances and sense of injustice, leading them to join the revolutionary movements that sought to address these socio-economic inequalities. Chapter 3 – Influence of Enlightenment Ideas The Enlightenment, with its emphasis on reason, liberty, and equality, greatly influenced French society. Philosophers such as Rousseau and Voltaire challenged the existing social order and propagated ideas of individual rights, social contract, and the need for political reforms. The Enlightenment, an intellectual and cultural movement that emerged in Europe during the 18th century, had a profound impact on French society and played a crucial role in shaping the course of the French Revolution. The Enlightenment challenged traditional authority, religious dogma, and established hierarchies, and advocated for reason, individual rights, and political reform. The ideas and philosophies of prominent Enlightenment thinkers, including Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Voltaire, resonated deeply with the French population, sowing the seeds of discontent and revolutionary fervor. One of the central themes of Enlightenment thought was the concept of reason. Enlightenment thinkers argued that reason should be the guiding principle in human affairs, challenging the authority of tradition and religious doctrine. This emphasis on reason fostered a spirit of critical thinking and intellectual curiosity, encouraging individuals to question established norms and institutions. In France, this intellectual climate paved the way for a new wave of ideas that called into question the divine right of kings, aristocratic privilege, and the authority of the church. Enlightenment philosophers also championed the ideals of liberty and equality. They argued that all individuals possess natural rights, including the right to life, liberty, and property. These ideas challenged the hierarchical structure of society, which was characterized by stark social divisions and inequalities. Jean-Jacques Rousseau's influential work, The Social Contract, proposed the idea of a social contract between the governed and the government, in which rulers derive their authority from the consent of the governed. This notion of popular sovereignty and the rights of individuals laid the foundation for the revolutionary demand for political and social equality. Voltaire, another prominent Enlightenment figure, was known for his advocacy of religious toleration, freedom of thought, and the separation of church and state. Through his writings and philosophical works, he critiqued the abuses of power within the church and the state, calling for greater religious freedom and a more secular society. Voltaire's ideas resonated with many who were disillusioned with the oppressive influence of the Catholic Church and its alliance with the monarchy. The influence of Enlightenment ideas in France was not confined to academic circles and intellectual salons. 
Enlightenment principles permeate at all levels of society, from the educated elite to the common people. The dissemination of ideas was facilitated by the proliferation of printed materials, such as newspapers, pamphlets, and books, which spread Enlightenment ideals to a wider audience. Salons, coffee houses, and Masonic lodges provided spaces for discussion and debate, further fueling the dissemination of Enlightenment thought. The impact of Enlightenment ideas on the French Revolution cannot be overstated. The intellectual climate created by the Enlightenment contributed to a growing dissatisfaction with the existing social and political order. The emphasis on reason, liberty, and equality provided a philosophical basis for the demands of the revolutionaries. The ideas of Rousseau, Voltaire, and other Enlightenment thinkers were instrumental in shaping the revolutionary agenda, which sought to dismantle the Ancien Régime, establish a more egalitarian society, and introduce political reforms. Chapter 4, Absolutist Monarchy France was ruled by an absolute monarchy under King Louis XVI, where power was concentrated in the hands of the monarchy and the aristocracy. The king's weak leadership, coupled with the corruption and incompetence of the ruling class, contributed to a loss of faith in the monarchy. In the years preceding the French Revolution, France was governed by an absolutist monarchy, with the authority vested in the hands of the king. King Louis XVI ascended to the throne in 1774, inheriting a monarchy that was already grappling with numerous challenges. The absolute power wielded by the monarchy, combined with the aristocracy's influence, created a system of governance that was marked by centralized authority, limited accountability, and a lack of political representation. Under an absolutist monarchy, the king possessed immense power, including the authority to make laws, levy taxes, and control the military. The monarchy, in conjunction with the aristocracy, formed the ruling elite, known as the privileged classes. The monarchy and the aristocracy enjoyed significant privileges and exemptions from taxes and legal obligations, which further exacerbated the disparities within French society. However, the absolutist monarchy under King Louis XVI faced considerable criticism and opposition. The king's leadership was plagued by a perceived weakness and indecisiveness, which fueled doubts about his ability to govern effectively. Louis XVI lacked the charisma and forceful personality that characterized previous monarchs, and he struggled to assert his authority over the nobility and manage the affairs of the state. His attempts at reform and his genuine concern for the welfare of his subjects were often stymied by resistance from the privileged classes, who were reluctant to relinquish their privileges. The ruling class, including the aristocracy and high-ranking clergy, was marked by corruption and incompetence. The aristocracy, particularly the court nobles, engaged in extravagant lifestyles and indulgent spending, often at the expense of the state coffers. This profligate behavior contributed to the mounting financial crisis that plagued the monarchy. Furthermore, the aristocracy's influence over the king and their dominance in the administration led to a disconnect between the ruling elite and the needs and aspirations of the general population. This disconnect eroded the legitimacy of the monarchy and fostered a sense of disillusionment among the common people. The perceived corruption and incompetence of the ruling class, coupled with the weak leadership of King Louis XVI, contributed to a loss of faith in the monarchy among the French population. The privileged classes were seen as self-serving and indifferent to the plight of the common people, who bore the brunt of the economic hardships and social inequalities. The monarch's inability to address these grievances and his perceived inability to govern effectively fueled a growing sentiment of discontent and paved the way for the revolutionary fervor that would ultimately lead to the overthrow of the monarchy. The absolutist monarchy, with its concentration of power and lack of accountability, became a target for criticism and a symbol of the inequities within French society. The shortcomings of King Louis XVI and the ruling class further eroded the authority and legitimacy of the monarchy, providing impetus to the revolutionary movements that sought to dismantle the existing order and establish a more just and inclusive society. Chapter 5, Financial Crisis The French state faced a severe fiscal deficit, primarily caused by the costs incurred during the Seven Years' War and the American Revolutionary War. Attempts to address the financial crisis, such as borrowing and imposing new taxes, led to widespread resentment among the population. The financial crisis that plagued France in the late 18th century played a significant role in the lead-up to the French Revolution. 
the French state found itself burdened with a mounting fiscal deficit, primarily due to the costs incurred during two major conflicts, the Seven Years' War, 1756-1763, and the American Revolutionary War, 1775-1783. These wars, though undertaken with strategic objectives and aspirations for French expansion, left the state heavily indebted and struggling to meet its financial obligations. The Seven Years' War, fought primarily against Britain, had drained the French treasury. France had financed the war effort through extensive borrowing, leading to a significant increase in the national debt. The costs of maintaining a large standing army, funding military campaigns, and supporting allies strained the state's resources. Furthermore, the loss of overseas colonies and trade routes, particularly in North America and India, deprived France of vital sources of revenue, exacerbating the financial difficulties. The financial strain continued with France's involvement in the American Revolutionary War, where the French monarchy provided crucial support to the American colonists in their struggle against Britain. Although this support was motivated partly by a desire to weaken their British rivals, it came at a significant cost. The monarchy incurred substantial expenses in financing the American cause, providing military aid, and maintaining a naval presence. These expenditures further contributed to the ballooning national debt and exacerbated the financial crisis. To address the financial crisis, the French government resorted to various measures. They increased borrowing, further burdening the state with interest payments and growing indebtedness. Attempts were made to impose new taxes and increase existing ones to generate revenue. However, the burden of taxation fell disproportionately on the lower classes, while the privileged classes, such as the nobility and clergy, enjoyed significant exemptions. This regressive taxation system deepened the resentment and frustration among the common people, who were already struggling under the weight of economic hardships. The attempts to address the financial crisis and stabilize the economy were met with widespread resentment and resistance from the population. The heavy tax burden, coupled with the economic hardships resulting from the agrarian crisis and rising bread prices, created a sense of injustice and discontent. The privileged classes, who were largely exempt from taxation, continued to enjoy their privileges while the burden fell on the shoulders of the lower classes. This growing disparity and the perceived inequities in the taxation system fueled the revolutionary sentiments and contributed to the revolutionary fervor that engulfed France. The financial crisis of the late 18th century in France was a significant catalyst for the revolutionary events that followed. The mounting national debt, coupled with the ineffective attempts to address the crisis, laid bare the economic inequalities and financial mismanagement of the monarchy. The resentment and frustration among the population, stemming from the regressive taxation system and economic hardships, fueled the revolutionary movements that sought to dismantle the existing order and bring about a more equitable society. Chapter 6, The Estates General and the National Assembly Faced with mounting pressure, King Louis XVI was compelled to convene the Estates General in 1789. The subsequent formation of the National Assembly, comprising representatives from the Third Estate, marked a pivotal moment in the revolution and represented a challenge to the existing power structure. The convocation of the Estates General in 1789 was a response to the political and economic crisis gripping France. The Estates General was an assembly that represented the three traditional estates of French society, the first estate, consisting of the clergy, the second estate, consisting of the nobility, and the third estate, comprising the commoners, which included the bourgeoisie, urban workers, and the rural peasantry. This assembly had not been convened since 1614 and was seen as a significant opportunity for political and social change. The convocation of the Estates General reflected the mounting pressure on King Louis XVI to address the grievances and demands of the population. The economic crisis, the agrarian crisis, and the influence of Enlightenment ideas had created a climate of discontent and frustration among the lower classes. The common people, who bore the brunt of the economic hardships and socio-economic inequalities, clamored for political representation and a say in the affairs of the state. The Estates General opened on May 5, 1789, at Versailles, with much anticipation and hope for meaningful reforms. However, from the outset, tensions arose regarding the composition and voting procedures of the Assembly. Traditionally, each estate had been granted one vote, which gave the clergy and nobility significant power, despite their relatively smaller representation compared to the third estate. The third estate, which represented the vast majority of the population, called for voting by head, which would grant them more proportional representation. 
frustrated by the resistance of the privileged classes, the representatives of the Third Estate, led by figures such as Emmanuel Joseph C. Eyes and Maximilian Robespierre, took matters into their own hands. On June 17, 1789, they declared themselves the National Assembly, asserting that they represented the true voice of the nation. This act of defiance marked a significant challenge to the existing power structure and a rejection of the traditional order. The formation of the National Assembly marked a turning point in the revolution. It represented a direct challenge to the absolute authority of the monarchy and the dominance of the privileged classes. The National Assembly became the symbol of the revolution and embodied the aspirations of the common people for political representation and social change. The formation of the National Assembly was met with resistance from the monarchy and the privileged classes. King Louis XVI, hesitant to relinquish his authority, attempted to assert control and limit the power of the National Assembly. However, the revolutionary fervor and the support of the people rendered these attempts ineffective. The National Assembly, driven by the ideals of the Enlightenment, set forth on a path of reform. On June 20, 1789, members of the National Assembly, accompanied by sympathetic members of the clergy and nobility, took the tennis court oath, pledging not to disband until they had drafted a constitution for France. This oath represented a commitment to creating a new political order based on principles of equality, liberty, and popular sovereignty. The events surrounding the Estates General and the subsequent formation of the National Assembly laid the foundation for the revolutionary events that followed. The challenge to the existing power structure, the assertion of popular sovereignty, and the demand for political representation ignited the revolutionary fervor that would eventually lead to the abolition of the absolute monarchy and the dismantling of the Ancien Régime. Chapter 7, The Storming of the Bastille On July 14, 1789, the commoners of Paris stormed the Bastille, a symbol of royal authority. This event marked the beginning of the revolution and unleashed a wave of uprisings across the country. The storming of the Bastille on July 14, 1789, stands as a defining moment in the French Revolution and a powerful symbol of popular resistance against the monarchy. The Bastille, a fortress prison located in Paris, had come to represent the oppressive power and tyranny of the royal regime. The event not only marked the beginning of the revolution but also served as a catalyst, inspiring a wave of uprisings and protests throughout France. The storming of the Bastille was the result of a confluence of factors that had fueled growing discontent and revolutionary fervor among the common people. The economic crisis, the agrarian crisis, and the demand for political representation had created a sense of frustration and anger, with the people yearning for change and an end to their hardships. On July 14, 1789, a large crowd, composed of Parisian workers, artisans, and elements of the urban poor, converged on the Bastille. The fortress had become a symbol of royal authority, and its very existence was seen as a representation of the monarchy's despotic rule. The commoners sought to seize weapons stored within the Bastille, as well as to challenge the monarchy's authority directly. The storming of the Bastille was a violent and chaotic event. The mob faced resistance from the garrison stationed within the fortress, leading to clashes and casualties on both sides. However, the determination of the crowd prevailed, and they eventually breached the defenses, overpowering the garrison. The fall of the Bastille was a symbolic victory for the revolutionaries, as it represented the breaking of royal authority and the beginning of a new era. The storming of the Bastille had profound consequences, both immediate and long-term. It served as a powerful symbol of popular resistance and defiance against the monarchy, inspiring the common people and emboldening their revolutionary aspirations. The event reverberated throughout France, igniting a wave of uprisings in other cities and regions. Peasants, urban workers, and the bourgeoisie took up arms, forming militias and demanding political representation and social change. The storming of the Bastille also had political ramifications. The fall of the fortress sent shockwaves through the monarchy and the ruling elite, who recognized the depth of popular discontent and the revolutionary potential of the masses. King Louis XVI and the aristocracy were compelled to acknowledge the demands of the people and make concessions. The event hastened the political reforms that followed, such as the abolition of feudalism and the introduction of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. Furthermore, the storming of the Bastille had a profound impact on the collective memory and symbolism of the French Revolution. It became an iconic event, celebrated as the triumph of the people against tyranny and oppression. The storming of the Bastille continues to be commemorated as a national holiday in France, Bastille Day, symbolizing the ideals of liberty, equality, and popular sovereignty that underpin the revolutionary struggle. Chapter 8, The Rise of Radicalism The revolution witnessed the emergence of radical factions, such as the Jacobins, who advocated for more extensive political and social reforms. 
The period of the Reign of Terror, led by Maximilien Robespierre, saw a wave of executions and authoritarian control. As the French Revolution progressed, a radicalization of the revolutionary movement took place, giving rise to factions that sought more extensive political and social reforms. One of the most influential radical groups was the Jacobins, who emerged as a dominant force during the period known as the Reign of Terror, characterized by a wave of executions and a centralization of power. The Jacobin Club, founded in 1789, gained prominence during the early years of the revolution. Composed mainly of middle-class professionals, intellectuals, and lawyers, the Jacobins were known for their commitment to the ideals of the revolution, particularly the principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity. They called for the establishment of a republic, the abolition of the monarchy, and the eradication of aristocratic privileges. The rise of the Jacobins can be attributed to various factors. The economic crisis, the political instability, and the ongoing war with other European powers created a climate of fear and uncertainty. The Jacobins capitalized on these conditions, presenting themselves as champions of the people against perceived internal and external threats to the revolution. They advocated for a strong centralized government that could protect the gains of the revolution and advance the cause of social and political equality. During the Reign of Terror, from 1793 to 1794, the Jacobins, led by Maximilien Robespierre, assumed control of the government. Robespierre, known as the Incorruptible, was a key figure in the radicalization of the revolution. Under his leadership, the Committee of Public Safety was established as a governing body with extraordinary powers to protect the revolution from its enemies, both internal and external. The reign of terror was characterized by a wave of executions and authoritarian control. The Committee of Public Safety implemented severe measures to suppress counter-revolutionary activities and to root out perceived enemies of the revolution. The Law of Suspects was enacted, enabling the arrest and execution of individuals deemed to be threats to the revolution. The Revolutionary Tribunal, established to try alleged counter-revolutionaries, carried out swift and often arbitrary judgments, resulting in thousands of executions. The reign of terror was marked by a climate of fear and suspicion. Informants and denunciations were widespread, leading to the arrest and execution of individuals from all walks of life. The repression extended beyond political opponents to include members of the aristocracy, clergy, and even former revolutionaries who were deemed insufficiently radical. The violence and authoritarian control exercise during this period created a climate of unease and division within French society. The radicalization of the revolution and the reign of terror came to an end with the fall of Robespierre and his associates. The excesses and abuses of power during this period had alienated many, including former supporters of the revolution. The Thermidorian reaction, a conservative backlash against the radicalism of the revolution, led to the arrest and execution of Robespierre and other leading Jacobins in July 1794. The rise of radicalism during the French Revolution, particularly embodied by the Jacobins and the period of the Reign of Terror, remains a subject of historical debate. Some argue that the radical phase of the revolution was a necessary response to the internal and external threats facing the revolution, while others emphasize the excesses and abuses committed in the name of revolutionary ideals. Chapter 9, Rise of Napoleon Bonaparte the chaos and political instability resulting from the revolution paved the way for Napoleon Bonaparte, who seized power in a coup d'état in 1799. Napoleon's rise to power marked the end of the revolution and the beginning of a new era in French history. The French Revolution, with its tumultuous events and radical transformations, created a power vacuum and a sense of uncertainty in France. The political landscape was characterized by factionalism, instability, and a lack of effective governance. It was within this context that Napoleon Bonaparte, a military general of exceptional talent, emerged as a prominent figure and ultimately seized power. Napoleon's rise to prominence can be traced back to his military successes during the Revolutionary Wars. As a young officer, he demonstrated exceptional military prowess and leadership skills, which caught the attention of his superiors. His early victories, such as the successful defense of Toulon in 1793 and the Italian campaigns of 1796 to 1797, propelled him to national fame and solidified his reputation as a military genius. The political chaos and infighting among the revolutionary factions created an opportunity for Napoleon. Sensing the discontent and desire for stability among the French population, Napoleon, along with a group of like-minded individuals, orchestrated a coup d'état on November 9, 1799, known as the 18 Brumaire. This coup toppled the existing government, the Directory, and established a new form of government known as the Consulate, with Napoleon as its first consul. Napoleon's rise to power marked a significant shift in the trajectory of the French Revolution. 
while the revolutionary ideals of liberty and equality were still invoked, the consolidation of power in the hands of a single individual signaled a departure from the principles of popular sovereignty and representative government. Napoleon's regime was characterized by authoritarian rule and a centralization of power. Napoleon's rule brought stability and effective governance to France. He implemented a series of reforms aimed at consolidating his power and modernizing the country. The Napoleonic Code, introduced in 1804, codified laws and legal principles, providing a more uniform and comprehensive legal system. This code emphasized principles of equality before the law, protection of private property, and the right to work. Additionally, Napoleon implemented administrative reforms that streamlined the bureaucracy and improved the efficiency of the government. Napoleon's rule also saw the expansion of French influence across Europe. Through a series of military campaigns, he sought to establish French hegemony and create a new European order. His victories, such as the Battle of Austerlitz in 1805 and the Battle of Jena Auerstedt in 1806, solidified his reputation as a military genius and elevated France to the position of a dominant European power. Despite his accomplishments, Napoleon's rule was not without controversy and resistance. His authoritarian style of governance and his efforts to consolidate power sparked opposition from various quarters. In response to the threat posed by Napoleon, coalitions of European powers, such as the Third Coalition and the Fourth Coalition, were formed to challenge French dominance. These coalitions ultimately led to Napoleon's downfall and his forced abdication in 1814. Napoleon's rise to power marked the end of the French Revolution and the beginning of a new era in French history. His regime, known as the Napoleonic Era, brought stability, modernization, and expansion to France. However, it also represented a departure from the revolutionary ideals of the early years of the revolution, as power became concentrated in the hands of a single individual. Napoleon's legacy is a subject of ongoing debate among historians, with opinions varying on the extent of his contributions and the impact of his rule. Chapter 10, Political Transformation the French Revolution laid the foundation for modern democracy by eliminating the absolute monarchy and establishing a constitutional monarchy. The revolutionary ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity influenced subsequent political movements and shaped the course of world history. The French Revolution, with its radical reimagining of political power and social order, brought about a profound political transformation in France and reverberated across the globe. The revolution witnessed the dismantling of the absolute monarchy that had ruled France for centuries and the establishment of a constitutional monarchy, which marked a significant step towards the principles of modern democracy. The revolutionaries of the time espoused the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity, which became the guiding principles of the revolution. These ideals challenged the prevailing notions of divine right and aristocratic privilege, advocating instead for the sovereignty of the people and the protection of individual rights. The revolutionaries sought to establish a political system that would guarantee the fundamental freedoms of citizens and ensure their active participation in the governance of the nation. One of the most pivotal moments in the political transformation of the French Revolution was the abolition of the absolute monarchy. The monarchy, long associated with the concentration of power and the denial of individual liberties, became a target of the revolutionaries' fervor. On August 10, 1792, following a series of events and rising tensions, the monarchy was overthrown, and King Louis XVI was deposed. With the monarchy abolished, the revolutionaries turned their attention to the establishment of a new political order. In 1791, the National Assembly, which had evolved from the Estates General, promulgated the Constitution of 1791, which created a constitutional monarchy. This new political system, while still retaining a monarch as the head of state, limited the king's powers and introduced a system of checks and balances. The constitution also provided for a bicameral legislature, comprising the legislative assembly, and outlined the rights and responsibilities of citizens. The political transformation of the French Revolution extended beyond the establishment of a constitutional monarchy. The revolutionaries sought to create a more inclusive and participatory political system. The revolutionaries' emphasis on the sovereignty of the people and their commitment to popular representation led to the creation of new political institutions and the extension of suffrage to broader segments of society. The concept of active citizenship emerged, wherein citizens were expected to actively engage in the political life of the nation. The ideals and principles of the French Revolution had a profound impact beyond the borders of France. The revolutionary ideas of liberty, equality, and fraternity resonated with people around the world, inspiring political movements and uprisings in other countries. The French Revolution became a symbol of hope and a catalyst for political change, with revolutions and calls for independence sweeping across Europe and the Americas in the ensuing decades. The political transformation brought about by the French Revolution laid the foundation for modern democracy. 
the revolution challenged the prevailing political structures and introduced new concepts of citizenship, political participation, and the rule of law. The principles and ideals of the revolution, including popular sovereignty and the protection of individual rights, influenced subsequent political movements and the development of democratic systems around the world. However, it is important to note that the French Revolution was not without its challenges and contradictions. The revolutionary period witnessed periods of political turmoil, factionalism, and violence. The quest for liberty and equality was often accompanied by excesses and abuses, as seen in the Reign of Terror. Nonetheless, the political transformation of the French Revolution remains a significant milestone in the evolution of political thought and the establishment of democratic governance. Chapter 11 Social Reforms The revolution brought about significant social changes, including the abolition of feudalism, the introduction of legal equality, and the secularization of society. The Napoleonic Code, implemented under Napoleon's rule, consolidated these reforms and influenced legal systems worldwide. The French Revolution of the late 18th century was not only a political upheaval but also a transformative period that brought about profound social reforms. These reforms aimed to break down the social and legal hierarchies of the Ancien Régime and establish a more egalitarian and secular society. The revolutionaries sought to abolish feudalism, introduce legal equality, and redefine the relationship between the state and religion. One of the central social reforms of the French Revolution was the abolition of feudalism. Feudalism was a system of social and economic relations that had prevailed in France for centuries, entailing obligations and privileges tied to land ownership. The revolutionaries viewed feudalism as a symbol of the Ancien Régime's oppressive social structure and sought its complete eradication. In August 1789, the National Assembly issued the decree abolishing feudalism, which abolished the feudal dues, serfdom, and other remnants of the feudal system. This reform marked a significant step towards the establishment of a more egalitarian society. Another crucial social reform of the French Revolution was the introduction of legal equality. The revolutionaries sought to replace the complex patchwork of regional laws and privileges with a unified legal system that treated all citizens equally. In 1791, the National Assembly passed the Civil Constitution of the Clergy, which aimed to subordinate the Catholic Church to the state and create a more secular society. The revolutionaries also abolished hereditary privileges and established equality before the law, ensuring that all citizens were subject to the same legal rights and obligations. The most significant legal reform of the revolutionary period was the development and implementation of the Napoleonic Code. Under Napoleon Bonaparte's rule, the Napoleonic Code, also known as the Civil Code of 1804, was introduced. This legal framework consolidated the social reforms of the revolution and influenced legal systems around the world. The Napoleonic Code codified and standardized French law, ensuring legal equality, protecting private property, and guaranteeing individual rights. It emphasized the principles of meritocracy, secularism, and legal certainty, providing a foundation for the modern legal systems of many countries. The social reforms of the French Revolution extended beyond the legal sphere. The revolutionaries aimed to create a more secular society by challenging the dominance and privileges of the Catholic Church. The civil constitution of the clergy, mentioned earlier, aimed to restructure the church and bring it under state control. The revolutionary government also secularized the calendar, replacing the Christian calendar with the Republican calendar, which sought to mark time according to the principles of the revolution. The social reforms of the French Revolution were not without challenges and contradictions. The revolutionary period witnessed tensions and conflicts between different factions and groups, particularly between the more radical elements and those advocating for a more moderate approach. The implementation of these reforms also faced resistance from conservative forces and counter-revolutionaries. However, the social reforms of the French Revolution represented a significant break from the past and laid the foundation for a more egalitarian and secular society. The abolition of feudalism, the introduction of legal equality, and the codification of laws in the Napoleonic Code brought about profound changes in social relations, property rights, and individual liberties. These reforms had far-reaching consequences, influencing not only French society but also inspiring social and legal transformations around the world. Chapter 12, Impact on Europe The French Revolution had a profound impact on Europe, both politically and ideologically. 
It inspired nationalist movements, challenged the existing order, and triggered a series of wars that reshaped the continent. The spread of revolutionary ideals also contributed to the rise of liberalism and nationalism in the 19th century. The French Revolution, with its radical ideals and transformative events, sent shockwaves throughout Europe. The revolution not only challenged the existing political and social order in France but also inspired political movements and upheavals across the continent. Its impact was felt politically, ideologically, and militarily, and its legacy shaped the course of European history. One of the significant impacts of the French Revolution on Europe was the spread of revolutionary ideals and the inspiration it provided to nationalist movements. The revolution's emphasis on the sovereignty of the people, the principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity, and the notion of popular sovereignty resonated with individuals and groups throughout Europe who sought to challenge the prevailing political systems and assert their own national identities. The French Revolution, with its call for self-determination and the liberation of oppressed peoples, became a source of inspiration for nationalist movements across Europe. In regions such as Italy, Germany, and the Balkans, the revolution's ideals fueled a growing sense of national identity and a desire for independence from foreign domination. The revolution's focus on the rights of individuals and the rejection of feudal privileges resonated with those who sought to establish their own nation-states and assert their own political and cultural autonomy. The impact of the French Revolution was not limited to ideological inspiration. The political turmoil and radicalization in France also had direct repercussions on the balance of power in Europe. The revolutionary government's expansionist ambitions and attempts to export the ideals of the revolution led to a series of wars with other European powers. The French Revolutionary Wars, which began in 1792, saw France pitted against coalitions of European monarchies seeking to contain the revolutionary threat. These wars not only reshaped the political map of Europe but also accelerated the spread of revolutionary ideas. French armies carried the revolutionary message and ideals wherever they went leading to a diffusion of revolutionary fervor across the continent. The conquests of Napoleon Bonaparte, who rose to power in the wake of the revolution, brought about significant political and administrative changes in the countries he conquered, spreading revolutionary principles and reforming legal systems. The impact of the French Revolution on Europe was not limited to political and military aspects. The revolution also contributed to the rise of liberalism and nationalism in the 19th century, the ideas and ideals of the revolution, including the emphasis on individual rights, constitutionalism, and popular sovereignty, influenced the development of political thought and the growth of liberal movements throughout Europe. The revolution's emphasis on national identity and self-determination also contributed to the rise of nationalism, as people sought to establish their own nation-states based on shared language, culture, and history. The legacy of the French Revolution and its impact on Europe were complex and multifaceted. The revolutionary ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity challenged the existing order and inspired political and social movements that sought to transform European societies. While the revolution's radicalism and its military campaigns generated fear and resistance among conservative forces, its ideals and principles also sowed the seeds for the rise of liberalism and nationalism, which would shape the political landscape of Europe for decades to come. Chapter 13, Conclusion The French Revolution stands as one of the most significant events in world history, shaping the trajectory of France and Europe for centuries to come. It was a complex and multifaceted revolution, driven by a confluence of factors and marked by a series of transformative events. The revolution was not a singular event with a clear beginning and end but rather a dynamic and evolving process that unfolded over the course of a decade. The causes of the French Revolution were deeply rooted in the socio-economic disparities of the time, with widespread poverty, regressive taxation, and a skewed distribution of wealth fueling social unrest. Political grievances against the absolutist monarchy, coupled with the influence of Enlightenment ideas that emphasized reason, liberty, and equality further contributed to the revolutionary fervor. The revolution emerged as a response to these grievances, as the people sought to assert their rights, challenge the existing power structure, and establish a more just and egalitarian society. The revolution brought about fundamental transformations in French society. It witnessed the abolition of feudalism, the establishment of a constitutional monarchy, and the introduction of legal equality. 
the revolutionaries aim to create a more inclusive and participatory political system, inspired by the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The social reforms of the revolution, including the Napoleonic Code, left a lasting impact, influencing legal systems worldwide and laying the foundation for modern democracy. The French Revolution also had far-reaching consequences beyond France's borders. It inspired nationalist movements across Europe, challenging the existing order and sparking a wave of political upheavals. The spread of revolutionary ideals contributed to the rise of liberalism and nationalism in the 19th century, reshaping the political landscape of Europe. The revolution's impact extended to military conflicts, as France's expansionist ambitions and revolutionary fervor led to a series of wars that redrew the map of Europe. The legacy of the French Revolution continues to resonate in the collective memory. It serves as a powerful reminder of the transformative power of popular movements and the pursuit of liberty and equality. The revolution's ideals and principles continue to influence political thought and inspire struggles for social justice around the world. However, the revolution was not without its challenges and contradictions, as the pursuit of revolutionary goals often led to violence, excesses, and the suppression of dissenting voices. In conclusion, the French Revolution was a watershed moment in history, driven by a complex interplay of factors and resulting in profound transformations in French society and beyond. It laid the foundation for modern democracy, social reforms, and a period of political turbulence in Europe. The revolution's enduring legacy serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle for liberty, equality, and social justice, resonating in the collective memory and inspiring future generations. More information and facts. Part 1. Women's role in the revolution. The French Revolution also witnessed the emergence of women as active participants in the revolutionary movement. Women played a crucial role in protests, political clubs, and demonstrations. They advocated for their own rights, such as access to education and political representation, and contributed to the revolutionary discourse on equality. The revolution, however, fell short in fulfilling women's aspirations for full equality, leading to subsequent feminist movements in the 19th century. The French Revolution was a period of immense social and political upheaval, and it provided women with a unique opportunity to participate in public life and challenge the prevailing gender norms of the time. Women from various social backgrounds became involved in the revolutionary movement, contributing their ideas, energy, and activism to the cause. One significant way in which women participated in the revolution was through their involvement in political clubs and societies. Women formed their own political clubs, such as the Society of Revolutionary Republican Women, where they discussed political issues, exchanged ideas, and organized protests. These clubs allowed women to articulate their demands for political and social equality and to assert their presence in the public sphere. Women were also active participants in demonstrations and protests during the revolution. They marched alongside men, demanding bread, political rights, and an end to the inequalities of the Ancien Régime. Women's involvement in these public protests highlighted their willingness to challenge the existing power structures and their commitment to the revolutionary ideals of liberty and equality. In addition to their physical presence in protests and political clubs, women made significant contributions to the revolutionary discourse through their writings and publications. Women such as Olympe de Gouges, Mary Wollstonecraft, and Etta Palm Dilders wrote passionately about women's rights, advocating for equality, education, and the right to participate in political life. Their writings challenged the prevailing notions of women's inferiority and called for the recognition of women's rights as essential to the ideals of the revolution. Despite their active participation and contributions to the revolutionary cause, the French Revolution fell short in fulfilling women's aspirations for full equality. The revolutionary government, while promising liberty and equality for all, did not extend these rights to women in practice. Women's political clubs were shut down, and their voices were often silenced or marginalized in the revolutionary discourse. The revolutionary leaders, for the most part, held conservative views on women's roles and believed that women's primary role was in the domestic sphere. The limitations placed on women's rights during the revolution did not deter women from continuing their struggle for equality. The revolution served as a catalyst for subsequent feminist movements in the 19th century, which sought to address the injustices and inequalities faced by women. 
women's rights activists, such as the suffragettes, drew inspiration from the revolutionary ideals of the French Revolution and fought for women's suffrage, access to education, and the elimination of discriminatory laws. Part 2, Impact on Colonialism and Slavery The French Revolution's ideals of liberty and equality had implications for France's overseas colonies and the institution of slavery. The revolution prompted debates on the rights of enslaved peoples and the abolition of slavery. While slavery was not abolished during the revolutionary period, the revolution's principles sparked anti-slavery sentiments and laid the groundwork for future abolitionist movements. The French Revolution, with its ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity, had significant implications for colonialism and the institution of slavery. As the revolution unfolded, the question of slavery became a central issue in the political discourse, prompting debates and discussions on the rights of enslaved peoples and the morality of the slave trade. Prior to the revolution, France had an extensive colonial empire, including colonies in the Caribbean, Africa, and the Indian Ocean. These colonies relied heavily on the labor of enslaved Africans who were forcibly brought to work on plantations and in other industries. The institution of slavery was deeply entrenched in the colonial economies and social structures, and the colonies played a crucial role in France's economic prosperity. The revolution's principles of liberty and equality raised questions about the inherent contradictions of slavery and the denial of basic human rights to enslaved people. The revolutionary ideals resonated with some members of the French abolitionist movement, who argued that the institution of slavery contradicted the principles of the revolution. They believed that the principles of freedom and equality should extend to all individuals, regardless of race or status. During the revolution, debates on the rights of enslaved peoples and the abolition of slavery emerged in the political sphere. Prominent figures such as Abbé Grégoire and Olympe de Gouges advocated for the abolition of slavery and the recognition of the rights of enslaved individuals. They argued that the institution of slavery was incompatible with the principles of liberty and equality espoused by the revolution. Despite these debates and the growing anti-slavery sentiments, the French Revolution did not lead to the immediate abolition of slavery. The revolutionaries were preoccupied with the domestic challenges and the consolidation of their power, and the question of slavery took a backseat to other pressing issues. The colonial interests and economic considerations associated with the slave trade also played a role in delaying any decisive action on the issue. However, the French Revolution's principles and the debates it generated laid the groundwork for future abolitionist movements. The revolution planted the seeds of anti-slavery sentiment, which would grow and gain momentum in the following decades. The revolutionary ideas of liberty and equality would inspire future abolitionists and provide a moral framework for their arguments against the institution of slavery. It was not until 1794, during the revolutionary period, that the French Convention passed a decree abolishing slavery in the French colonies. This decree, known as the Law of 16 Pluvius, Year 2, declared that slavery is abolished in all the colonies, freedom is given to all men. However, this decree was short-lived, as slavery was reinstated under Napoleon's rule in 1802. The French Revolution's impact on colonialism and slavery extended beyond France's borders. The revolution's principles and the debates it sparked influenced anti-slavery movements in other countries, particularly in Britain and the United States. The revolution's emphasis on individual rights, freedom, and equality provided moral ammunition to abolitionist arguments and inspired activists to challenge the institution of slavery. Part 3, Cultural and Artistic Expression the French Revolution had a profound impact on cultural and artistic expression. It gave rise to new forms of political and satirical literature, as well as art and music that celebrated revolutionary ideals. The revolution also witnessed the destruction of symbols associated with the old regime and the emergence of new cultural forms that aimed to reflect the aspirations of the revolution. The French Revolution unleashed a wave of creative energy and cultural transformation. The revolutionary ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity inspired artists, writers, and musicians to engage with the political and social changes of the time and express their views through various forms of artistic expression. One significant aspect of cultural expression during the French Revolution was the emergence of political and satirical literature. Writers and pamphleteers used their literary skills to disseminate revolutionary ideas, critique the old regime, and advocate for political change. 
political clubs and newspapers became important platforms for the circulation of these writings, which aimed to shape public opinion and mobilize support for the revolution. Prominent figures such as Jean-Paul Marat, Maximilien Robespierre, and Camille Desmoulins used their writings to rally the masses and justify the revolutionary cause. Satirical literature also flourished during the revolution, employing humor and irony to critique the monarchy, aristocracy, and other institutions associated with the old regime. Playwrights such as Pierre-Augustine Caron de Beaumarchais used their works to challenge social hierarchies and expose the corruption and decadence of the Ancien Régime. These satirical works provided a means to ridicule the old order and undermine its legitimacy, helping to fuel the revolutionary spirit. The visual arts also played a significant role in capturing the spirit of the revolution. Artists sought to depict the events, heroes, and ideals of the revolution through their paintings and sculptures. The neoclassical style, with its emphasis on ancient Greek and Roman themes, became popular during this period, as it was seen as evoking the noble and virtuous qualities of the revolution. Artists such as Jacques-Louis David created iconic works that celebrated revolutionary figures like Jean-Paul Marat and depicted key events, such as the storming of the Bastille. In addition to traditional forms of artistic expression, the revolution also witnessed the rise of new cultural forms that aimed to reflect the aspirations of the revolution. For example, revolutionary festivals were organized, such as the Festival of the Supreme Being, which sought to replace religious ceremonies with secular celebrations of the revolution and its ideals. These festivals combined elements of theater, music, and pageantry to create a sense of unity and shared purpose among the revolutionaries. The revolution also brought about the destruction of symbols associated with the old regime. Monuments, statues, and emblems of royal authority were toppled, as the revolutionaries sought to erase the remnants of the monarchy and aristocracy. The destruction of these symbols served as a visual representation of the revolutionary spirit and the desire to create a new society based on the principles of the revolution. However, it is important to note that cultural and artistic expression during the revolution was not homogenous. There were divergent views and competing artistic visions that reflected the political and ideological divisions of the time. Artists and writers were not immune to the factionalism and conflicts that characterized the revolutionary period, and their works often reflected these divisions. Part 4, Impact on European Monarchies The French Revolution's emphasis on popular sovereignty and the overthrow of the monarchy posed a direct challenge to monarchies across Europe. The revolution inspired fear among European rulers, who sought to suppress revolutionary ideas and contain the spread of revolutionary movements. This led to a period of political and military conflicts, as European powers sought to protect their own interests and counter the revolutionary threat. The French Revolution, with its radical ideals and the overthrow of the monarchy, sent shockwaves throughout Europe. The revolution's emphasis on popular sovereignty, the rights of the people, and the rejection of monarchical rule directly challenged the existing order of absolute monarchies across the continent. European rulers, facing the possibility of similar revolutionary movements in their own realms, viewed the French Revolution with alarm and sought to suppress its ideals and contain its spread. The revolutionary ideas and events in France fueled fears among European monarchies. The revolutionary principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity were seen as subversive to the traditional authority and divine right of kings. Monarchs feared that these ideals would inspire their own subjects to rise up against them, demanding political rights and reforms. The revolution's emphasis on the sovereignty of the people also raised concerns among monarchs, who viewed their own power as divinely ordained and not subject to the will of the people. In response to the French Revolution, European rulers formed coalitions and alliances to protect their interests and counter the revolutionary threat. The first coalition, consisting of Austria, Prussia, Great Britain, and other European powers, sought to restore the French monarchy and suppress the revolutionary forces. The coalition launched military campaigns against France, aiming to bring an end to the revolution and re-establish monarchical rule. The French Revolutionary Wars, which began in 1792, marked a period of intense political and military conflicts between revolutionary France and the European monarchies. The revolutionaries, under the leadership of the Committee of Public Safety and later Napoleon Bonaparte, sought to defend the revolution and spread its principles to other countries. The wars saw a series of shifting alliances, as both sides fought for their own interests and sought to gain the upper hand. The impact of the French Revolution on European monarchies was not limited to military conflicts. The revolution's ideals and events had a profound ideological impact, fueling political debates and inspiring political movements throughout Europe. The revolution's principles of popular sovereignty, political rights, and the rejection of absolutist rule resonated with individuals and groups who sought to challenge the existing order and demand political reforms. These movements, often labeled as revolutionary or liberal, emerged in various European countries, 
posing a direct challenge to the established monarchies. The fear of revolutionary ideas and the desire to suppress revolutionary movements led to a period of political repression and conservatism among European monarchies. The Congress of Vienna, held after the defeat of Napoleon, sought to restore stability and re-establish monarchical rule across Europe. The principles of conservatism and the balance of power became the guiding principles of European politics in the post-revolutionary era. Part 5, Historiography of the French Revolution The historiography of the French Revolution is a rich and evolving field of study. Different interpretations and perspectives have emerged over time, shaping our understanding of the revolution. From traditional views that emphasize the revolution's excesses and violence to more nuanced interpretations that highlight its transformative potential, historians continue to debate and reevaluate the causes, events, and consequences of the French Revolution. The study of the French Revolution has captivated historians for centuries, and its historiography is as complex and diverse as the revolution itself. The interpretation of the revolution has evolved over time, reflecting the changing intellectual and ideological currents of each era. The historiography of the French Revolution encompasses a wide range of approaches and perspectives, each offering its own insights and analyzes. In the immediate aftermath of the revolution, the historiography was largely influenced by the accounts of eyewitnesses and participants. These early histories tended to focus on the dramatic events, the personalities involved, and the immediate consequences of the revolution. François Meunier's History of the French Revolution, 1824, and Adolphe Thiers' The History of the French Revolution, 1823 to 1827, are examples of this early historiography, which sought to provide a comprehensive narrative of the revolution. During the 19th century, the historiography of the French Revolution became increasingly polarized. On one hand, there were interpretations that emphasized the revolution's excesses, violence, and the breakdown of social order. These views, often associated with conservative or monarchist perspectives, portrayed the revolution as a destructive force that unleashed chaos and terror. Works such as Hippolyte Taine's The Origins of Contemporary France, 1875 to 1893, and Louis Blanc's History of the French Revolution, 1847, exemplified this approach. On the other hand, there were interpretations that sought to highlight the revolutionary ideals and the transformative potential of the revolution. These more sympathetic views, often associated with liberal or socialist perspectives, focused on the social, political, and cultural changes brought about by the revolution. François Guizot's History of the English Revolution, 1826, and Georges Lefebvre's The French Revolution, 1939, exemplify this approach, emphasizing the revolution's role in the rise of modern democracy and the emergence of new social and political ideologies. In the 20th century, the historiography of the French Revolution witnessed a shift toward more nuanced and interdisciplinary approaches. Historians began to analyze the revolution from multiple perspectives, incorporating social, cultural, and gender history into their studies. They explored the experiences of various social groups, such as peasants, women, and workers, and examined the cultural and artistic expressions of the revolution. These studies aim to provide a more comprehensive and nuanced understanding of the revolution, moving beyond the traditional political and narrative approaches. In recent decades, there has been a growing interest in the global dimensions of the French Revolution. Historians have explored the impact of the revolution beyond France's borders, examining its influence on other countries, colonies, and revolutionary movements. They have also explored the transnational networks and exchanges of ideas that shaped the revolutionary period. The historiography of the French Revolution is an ongoing conversation, with new research, interpretations, and debates constantly emerging. Historians continue to delve into primary sources, reassess traditional narratives, and explore new avenues of inquiry. They critically engage with the existing interpretations and seek to shed light on the complexities, contradictions, and legacies of the revolution. In conclusion, the historiography of the French Revolution is a vibrant and evolving field of study. Different interpretations and perspectives have emerged over time, shaping our understanding of the revolution. From traditional views that emphasize the revolution's excesses and violence to more nuanced interpretations that highlight its transformative potential, historians continue to debate and reevaluate the causes, events, and consequences of the French Revolution. The ongoing research and scholarship in the field ensure that our understanding of this pivotal moment in history remains dynamic and ever evolving. Thanks for watching to the end. See you in new videos.